me of a Tesla. I have arrived. Me die of technology. But first, I must. <laughs> you know what? I love Tesla for that reason and Elon Musk for putting in all of these ridiculous things in the Tesla. And it never stops. Simple software updates and you just get to have fun. So this is the menu where you get to access all the cool stuff. You got your boombox with the megaphone. That's what I was using earlier. Then you have the light show and once you get the light show going, there's some music and basically you have to step out of the car to get this to work. Once you turn it on, the windows roll down, the trunk lid flaps, the lights flash. Just something to show off your Tesla to your kids and your neighbors. And emissions, of course, is where the fun's at. The ludicrous fart. You got your short shorts ripper. <laughs> Neurostink. The Twitter fart. So all of Elon's companies have associated farts with them. Falcon Heavy for his... <laughs> Uh, Elon Musk just knows how to have fun. Trax is where, as you're charging and you're super bored, play some music. Create your own songs. Then a fireplace thing. And the AC turned on with it. The air is about to turn hot. <laughs> Ooh. With some songs there too, I guess. <laughs> this is the menu where you just can get carried away with all kinds of fun. Besides all of the fun stuff, the technology in this car and the way they have everything configured and laid out is really next level, especially compared to everything else. Like the, Tesla is just completely operating way above and they have had a, a huge head start. They've been doing this for 10 years now. And this is still just the beginning of what technology can do with AI on the horizon and all the things that are going on with chat GPT, you can imagine how crazy this entire piece of technology will get. And having it on wheels and having the car part of it attached to it, I think it is just really exciting what the future holds. But going back to this interface and how everything's designed, it's extremely simple and intuitive to use. I think they did such a tremendous job making this as simple as possible. And it's just like using your phone, the touch sensitivity, the touch screen, the usability, you don't have to think it's just all there. And once you start playing around with it, you just automatically know what to do. You don't need to read anything to figure out how to use the menus. It's all laid out very simply and easily. And because it's operated like your phone, which you use every day, this is just like a big phone and like an iPad and the interaction and the smoothness, all of it works exactly the same way. All the car systems are available once you click on this car icon and you can see how you can change all the different settings in the car with the suspension, charging, autopilot. Just go down the list and you have everything very easily accessible. Now with the map, the map is very, very easy to use and intuitive. You can see how easy it is to scroll with the fingers and pinching. Just like your iPad, this works exactly the same way. Uh, and the navigation and the maps on this car just work extremely well. The climate control, I think they've done a really good job because just by swiping your finger here, you can adjust the temperature. And then once you click on it, the ability to change the airflow like this just by scrolling across both for the passenger and driver this is a really cool feature and it just makes it very easy to adjust the temperature exactly to your liking and all of it's available just through this one menu and i really like this piece where you can just open up the front and the trunk just automatically opening you can close the trunk just by clicking on it again. Although I don't know why they didn't do the same thing for the front. You should be able to operate both electronically. And then the other pieces you can change with your mirrors and your steering, all of that's done through this menu. 
Now, besides all the fun stuff and all of the gadgetry for the interior, for operating the car, of course, you have to be entertained because as you're charging this car, sitting in a Tesla supercharger, there's not a second that you'll be bored. So there's a, a lot of different entertainment options here. And of course you have your phone that you can play with, but also just having this in the Tesla, there's no shortage of things to keep you busy. So even if the Tesla takes forever to charge, which obviously it doesn't, there's plenty of things that you can do in the car. So once you click on this icon to open up your theater, you have a lot of different options. You have YouTube, Twitch, Disney, Netflix. So whatever you wanna watch, you can do it while the car is parked and charging. You can scroll through endless amounts of TikTok. And then also there's an arcade so you can play games. If you're feeling like you wanna work out of your brain, you can play chess. My favorite is Skyforce. This is what I mean when you're charging your car, I don't think you'll be bored for one second. And if you want the full gaming experience, you can turn up the volume or up or down. And the speakers in this car are amazing. It's theater quality speakers in this Tesla. So in this menu, you have your browser, if you wanna search for things, or your radio, karaoke, Apple Music, calendar, things, if you're connected to the internet that you can access. Or if you wanna have a Zoom meeting from the car. To turn your Tesla into an office, which I'm sure many people do. And then the cool thing is in the back, there is a rear screen that I'll just that I'll show you in a minute. And you can control that rear area, the passenger area, and turn on and off the air conditioning or the theater piece. So all of those things you can manage through up here. When these Teslas really start driving themselves and become full self-driving, you can imagine that you would spend most of your time back here. So we have one screen in the center console, but future generations of Tesla probably will have displays that just hang in front of your face. So you have something to do while you're being driven around. But for now, it is very comfortable back here and spacious. And especially because you have your own entertainment back here. So let me show you how that works. This screen back here works very similar to how it does in the front. It's a pretty big size and there's a lot that you can do here. So you have your own climate control and you can change the vent the same way you can change it up front just by scrolling on here. And this is again, one of the really cool features of the Tesla and just the way they've designed it. And then besides the climate control and changing that, you also have heated seats that you can turn on and off. And then you can also control the music from back here. And of course you have your standard entertainment. Same as up front, you can watch YouTube. And then just like you do on your phone, you just swipe to go back to the main menu. Then just by being back here, it's pretty comfortable, especially with this panoramic sunroof. The way they've designed the car, it's very comfortable for everybody that's in here, passengers and the folks up front. So Tesla has created some really cool technology, very advanced, and it's leaps and bounds above the competition and what they're doing. But the question that I have is, what happens if everything stops working and I'm stuck inside the car? Everything's a button. How would I even get out? Oh, wait, I know. I'll just ask Google. This is, of course, assuming that the internet's still working. There's your answer.